outdoor retailer, thank you guys for getting up and showing up this morning. I appreciate it. Um, just so you know, and you probably already figured it out, these are QR codes, um, and there's some on these signs here for um, the trend sheet. So we've got some, a lot of the data points that I'm going to be showing you this morning are on those trend sheets, so it saves you from taking a lot of notes. Um, so you can get those from here, from the signs. You can come by the booth and get the QR codes later. Um, I've got my colleagues. I'm looking. The lights are very bright in my eyes. So I can't see you. But I know Dirk and Matt are back here. They raised their hands. Um, they've got the actual physical copies. And we have some physical trend sheets also at the booth. So um, again, save you note taking and it's all there. Um, welcome, how, how many people have been to one of these before? Have you been to this session? So let me, like maybe half of you, it's hard to see the, I got bright lights here. Um, so if, for those of you that haven't, um, we've got kind of a, a, a format here. I'm going to tell you a little bit about, give you a little bit of background about NPD, just so you understand where the data comes from. And then Matt Powell, who's our global industry advisor for sports, he's going to give you an overview of the total sports market that we track. Um, and then he's going to do it via video recording. And then I'm going to come back up and we're going to deep dive into outdoor specialty and snow sports specialty. So um, big surprise. Um, does anyone know what, who IRI is? Raise your hand if you have heard of IRI. So we got a couple people out there. So IRI is, um, they do what NPD does. They track retail sales. But what they do is they track CPG, consumer packaged goods, like grocery. And so NPD, um, um, the merger was approved in August, and we are in the process of merging with IRI. Um, a little bit about NPD. NPD is, just like IRI, a global company. We track what we call consumer products. We track consumer products across 19 countries, different from grocery and pa packaged goods, which are fast moving, where everything from TV to snowboards and skis, so it's, it's that slower moving consumer products. And here, NPD tracks a lot of different categories. Kind of the so what to everyone in this room if you're like, I don't care about automotive or I don't care about um, office supplies. What's interesting about this is that we're able to have this perspective on what happens when. So if you remember back in COVID, we don't want to really want to go back there, but in March, you know, we all, you know, the, the, we're all staying at home, we can't go anywhere. And as you all know, and you probably don't even want to think about it, if you have stores, your stores were probably closed in March. But what was happening? People were staying at home and they needed, their kids were now working from home, so they needed laptops. So office supplies went through the roof, toys went through the roof. So we, we really have this perspective. If, if someone's not buying a ski or a snowboard, what else is happening and why? So it's kind of the so what that we're going to go through today. We talk about that IRI and NPD merging together. Once we merge together, we'll be tracking in the US $3 trillion across eight segments. So from grocery and beauty, health, things like that that IRI tracks to sports and everything that NPD tracks. So there's going to be even more insights and trends that we can bring to you. So who am I? I'm Julia. I'm with the sports team at NPD. And this is what we track when we track sports. We talk about sports. We mean apparel, footwear, equipment, and accessories. We mean across athletics and team sports, everything from golf and pickleball to baseball and basketball, all the way through to fishing. And today, really where I'm going to go after Matt talks is we're going to deep dive into outdoor specialty and snow specialty and look at what's selling. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Matt. Matt's going to give you the highest level overview across all sports in the US. Really pay attention when Matt's talking. He's going to talk about really trends in e-commerce, promotion, 
So these are going to trickle down to what we're going to talk about after Matt's done when we dive into outdoor specialty. So I'm going to let them take it away with Matt. Good morning. I'm uh, Matt Powell. I'm the Senior Industry Advisor for Sports at the NPD Group, and welcome to our NPD Trend Breakfast. Uh, I'm going to be taking you through uh, what's happening currently in the uh, athletic apparel, footwear, and equipment markets. And then Julia is going to give you a bit deeper dive in terms of uh, what's happening in the outdoor side of things. Um, one of the things that we saw during the height of the pandemic um, was a real surge in uh, e-commerce purchasing versus in-store. Um, you can see in, in athletic footwear, it was 42% of the business in 2020 and 35% of the activewear business. That business, uh, th those numbers drifted backwards a little bit. Uh, in 21, um, and, and particularly in the case of uh, uh, athletic footwear, uh, we're actually seeing the numbers returning to uh, 21 levels, and I expect that we will see these numbers continue to grow um, over time, uh, driven primarily by uh, brand uh, direct-to-consumer businesses, which is primarily done via e-commerce. Within athletic footwear, um, sales for the year through um, September uh, down uh, 6%. Um, units are down 8. Uh, average selling price is up 2. Um, and uh, we still are well above uh, 2019 levels, uh, even though we've seen some retrenchments from last year's record, uh, record sales levels. By category, uh, sport lifestyle, which includes the retro categories, is the largest, uh, uh, but sales there are down 8%. Uh, running shoes in the broader market also down 8%. The work business has been good throughout the entire pandemic and remains up four. Uh, the hiking business uh, for the year so far is down one, cold weather down seven. Um, uh, and uh, uh, it's interesting to note though that in, mo in most cases we remain above 2019 levels even though we've seen some retrenchment. There are a few categories, training, basketball, and outdoor water sandals where we drop below 2019 levels. Um, average selling prices uh, continue to go up, but not as rapidly as they had been. Um, and um, I expect that we will start to see some moderation here in average selling prices going up uh, as the marketplaces become extremely promotional. And um, I think that that, that will uh, drive average selling prices down. Um, we saw promotions go up in Q3 uh, versus uh, a year ago. Uh, up 17% in dollars and up 20% in units. Um, Q4, I expect we'll see a similar pattern. Uh, there's far too much inventory in the marketplace. We warned about this a year ago, and um, uh, brands and retailers are having to promote to, uh, to flush this inventory out. By wearer segment, uh, men's down six, women's down five, kids down seven, so all relatively the same. Um, women's had been the star during the pandemic and it remains uh, our greatest uh, opportunity for, for growth. Within women's, uh, the categories that uh, slowed up, uh, sport lifestyle, while not as big as it is in men's, down about the same rate as is running. Uh, cold weather boots down 11, um, uh, hiking uh, up to uh, work up 14. We're seeing many more women joining the trades now and the women's work business has been consistently been pretty good. Uh, within active apparel, uh, sales are down 4% through September. Units again down 7. Average selling price is up 4. Um, and you can see that while we again have had some retrenchments from again the, the 2021 record year, um, the, uh, the numbers still remain well above 2019 levels. Um, by category, uh, knit shirts is the largest category sales, down nine. Uh, pants driven by sweatpants, up one. Uh, the shorts business has, has slipped a bit. Uh, sweatshirts, which have been a really strong growing category for uh, activewear, um, is still growing, but not growing nearly as fast. Um, swim down significantly against what was a record year a year ago. And interestingly, outerwear is starting to make uh, some noise, and the outerwear business is has been better than expected, even though we didn't really have the weather uh, until late. Um, uh, and I think there's a there's an inverse relationship between sweatshirts and outerwear um, that uh, we may be beginning to see manifest itself and, and seeing a swing back to uh, to outerwear. 
Um, the underwear businesses all were really good during the pandemic, and all of those have slowed up. Again, average selling prices are increasing for the year, but not nearly at the rate that they did a year ago. Um, and um, I believe we will see this moderate as we move into uh, into the fourth quarter. Uh, and here's an indicator of that. In third quarter, uh, dollar dollars on sale in um, active apparel were up 18% and units were up 19%. And I expect that we will see this trend continue uh, as we move into a fourth quarter and into 23. And by wearer segment, uh, women's again, which had been a, a star in uh, during the pandemic, has really slowed up. Uh, down eight, men's down one, and kids down five. And within women's, swim is the largest category and took a big hit. Uh, pant business is not good here, where it is good in men's. Uh, sweatshirt business is negative again, where it's positive in men's. Um, and uh, as we mentioned, the underwear business is all soft. Uh, within team sports, um, sales are up two percent. Uh, versus a year ago, uh, units are down seven, average selling prices up 10. Um, this is a real reversal from some of the other categories. And, and again, we've reset to a new higher level um, against uh, 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 2019. Um, golf is the largest category within team sports, sales down about 1%. The scholastic business is all quite strong. Um, we, were, we were closed uh, through uh, the first half of last year. Uh, pre the previous year, so we had a, a pretty good f first half uh, this year. Things have slowed up a little bit as we moved into third quarter. But baseball, basketball, soccer, um, football, uh, lacrosse all up nicely. Um, the racket sport business is up 13%. Um, that's being driven almost entirely by pickleball. Uh, the pickleball phenomenon continues to be a juggernaut out there and uh, uh, shows no sign of abating. Average selling prices again here are uh, increasing, but for the most part at a lower rate uh, than uh, than they did in 21. Uh, uh, promotions went way up in the third quarter in team sports, um, uh, up 37% uh, in dollars and up 28% in units. Within the home fitness category, uh, sales are down 28%. Um, here, I think we are looking at uh, what I'm calling a one and done's phenomenon. Um, people who bought a treadmill sometime during the pandemic don't need another one. Uh, people who bought a, a, a stationary bike during the pandemic don't need another one. And, um, and so we're not able to offset that real surge that we saw uh, during, during the uh, months of the pandemic. Units are down 30%, average selling price is up three. Uh, again, uh, average selling prices are growing, but at, at a lower rate than they had uh, previously. Um, by category, uh, virtually every category is negative. Um, and um, uh, I think we, we potentially could see this continue into 23. Um, but again, I always have to point out that we are well above the 2019 uh, baseline. Uh, promotions here actually slowed in the third quarter. Um, this category got soft a lot earlier than some other ones. And I think uh, we saw some promotions earlier, but uh, actually saw promoting down uh, in uh, home fitness equipment for uh, for quarter. And then the bike business, uh, down 9%, 10%, down 17% in units. Average selling price is up 8. Um, and you can see, again, I think the one and done phenomenon here. If you bought a bike during the pandemic, you probably don't need another one this year. Um, the one category that continues to shine is uh, electric bikes. Uh, sales are up 16%. Uh, most of the other major categories showed decline. Average selling prices, again, moderating from the, the rates of increase that we saw in uh, 21, particularly in road bikes. And then finally, the outdoor industry. Uh, outdoor did not hit the peaks um, that we saw in a lot of the other equipment categories during the pandemic. Um, and so we have really less to give back. Uh, sales for the year are flat. Um, with uh, units down five and average selling prices up five. Um, by category, um, we're looking at uh, apparel up 3%. That's more than half of the business. Equipment about 25% of the business down 4%. Footwear about 15% of the business down three. Uh, and accessories making up the balance up five. Um, 
within uh, the three segments that we use to measure the outdoor industry. Athletic specialty sporting goods is uh, trending uh, slightly up. Outdoor specialty retailers are up 14%. That's a very strong result. Um, and uh, sports specialty e-commerce up 8 um, uh, so uh, while athletic specialty sporting goods is about uh, three quarters of the business, um, it dra it's dragged down some of the other uh, really solid performance that we've seen in outdoor. Outdoor apparel uh, up three percent for the year so far, as I said. Units down three. Average selling price is up six. Um, within the categories, uh, bright spots are outerwear up seven, uh, pants up fourteen, sweatshirts up nineteen. Uh, and sweatshirts, I believe, remains a, a great opportunity for, uh, for the outdoor apparel industry. Um, within equipment, uh, sales are down four, units down seven, average prices up three. Um, the bigger, uh, biggest uh, increase, uh, in, I'm sorry, by volume categories, um, uh, bottles, uh, water bottles, uh, and uh, insulated cool containers are all strong, up seven. I think this is folks going back to work in an office folks commuting again, um, and uh, that business has been quite solid. Kayak business, again, I think a one-and-done story um, uh, during the pandemic, down 14. Um, camp chairs, coolers, um, th these categories are really what we're referring to as backyard uh, outdoors uh, activities, uh, people extending their home into their yard, um, and uh, th these categories were good during the pandemic and remain so. Uh, outdoor footwear was down three, um, with units down 10, and average selling prices up eight. Um, uh, outdoor footwear in Canada um, is outperforming the, the, the uh, U.S. market. Um, you can see here that uh, U.S. is in the navy bar. Um, total outdoor footwear is down eight, whereas in Canada it's up eight. It's, I'm sorry, in the U.S. down five, and in Canada up eight. Uh, cold weather boots in the U.S. down nine, and in Canada up 15. Uh, and this category is significantly more important to the overall uh, footwear business in Canada, so uh, something to keep an eye on. Here you can see that, uh, what I just said, that the, the outdoor category is, uh, is double um, the percentage that represents to the U.S. Um, and um, several of the, uh, this is back now just U.S. only, um, seeing uh, growth in running here where we didn't in the broader market. And there's still a decline in athletic specialty sporting goods in running. So big, big increases in uh, sports specialty e-commerce and outdoor specialty retail in running. Um, and I expect that that trend will continue. Um, the hiking business down 9%, cold weather down 2%. Uh, and within outdoor accessories, um, uh, sales uh, up 5% uh, for the year. Uh, so far, pa backpacks up four. I think, again, kids going back to uh, physical schools again. Um, the uh, sunglass business up one, and duffel, duffel and sport equipment bags up, uh, up to 9%. Uh, luggage business has been quite good. People are traveling again, um, and, uh, and so we're seeing some increases there in luggage as well. Um, and then within outdoor sports equipment, um, promotions were up significantly in Q3 versus a year ago, up 49% in dollars, up 5% in units. Um, so that's not a that's not a happy trend. So thank you. Uh, appreciate uh, your attendance today, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in person uh, in the future. Thanks, Matt. Um, so we're going to deep dive now into the specialty side of the business. So we'll look at, um, really think about what Matt said, and we're going to kind of take it down. You're going to see things that are the same. You're going to see some things that are a little bit different. We'll also look at top sellers. So as you walk around the show today, um, it just it kind of put things in context. This morning, I always kind of think about what do I want you to walk out of this morning with? And really, I'd love you to walk away with two ideas, two things to think about, and kind of two questions that are answered or um, that kind of stimulates you as you go to the show to say, aha, you know, this, this kind of um, makes sense, or I wanted to think more about this. So 
Um, about me, if you don't know me, um, I've been doing this for 23 years. I came to my first outdoor retailer show in 1999 here at the Salt Palace. It was the, the tornado, so it was quite a first show. Um, and then all you really need to know is that I love to fly fish. Um, I, love tr I love fresh water, but I love salt water and tarpon. Fishing is my passion. This, um, I put this up here, and um, I'm going to ask Dirk to raise his hand again. Um, Dirk did a webinar before the show. Um, I, it's going to be up in the education, so you can see it. It was recorded. And he really talked about this. So we look at, you know, Matt talked a lot about promotions, e-commerce, um, but then we also look at things like inflation, supply chain issues, um, you know, the economy, population changes, all of that. And the reason why we look at this, not just retail sales, we look at activity. There's a, the OIA participation study for the new participation study is probably getting ready to come out. So you want to know, are people doing the activities more? We look at all of these things so that we can understand where's the market going, where's it heading, can we begin to predict what's going to happen. So I'm putting this up um, just as you kind of think about these things. And then really I encourage you to go and watch Dirk's webinar because he goes into a lot of detail on population changes or inflation or spend by consumer. Um, so I think it's, it's really good to kind of help put all these things together. Another thing that I, I do when I'm thinking about this and putting things together is just words come to me. I write them down, and sometimes I don't know why. So um, one of the things that just came to, and so these are like things that I think are important. There's another word that I didn't, I took off here. I didn't write it down because, but it keeps coming back, and that's campfire. So just keep that in mind. But I said to somebody, and, and this gentleman's in the room today, um, yesterday I said, you know, nostalgia just keeps coming back. It's a huge driver in marketing. Nostalgia is very, very important. And he said, well, it's the number one driver of millennials. Well, why? Because, uh, again, grandparents are very important to millennials. But think about a, a nostalgia. Think about outdoor living. Think about what nostalgia drives. Then we look at outdoor living. You're going to see a lot of categories that are put going into outdoor living that are selling in this business. Then I put the word happy. I'm not really happy with the word happy. But really, when we think about outdoors, being outdoors, you'll see, and if we go outside the, this industry and we look just kind of mainstream media, they're talking about if you want to reduce your stress, if you want to feel better, then be in the out of doors, right? There's all of that, all, it's the science, it's the studies that they have. And so, but we know what it feels like. We know what it feels like to be on top of a mountain. I know what it feels like to be literally at the end of a bayou, an hour, you know, from any land on the edge of the Gulf of Mexico and standing there in like perfectly calm water or perfectly rough seas. And it's that feeling that's almost above happiness. Um, but what is the outdoor giving to you and what's the outdoor giving to your customers? Connected. You'll see more and more studies, and they've been, like in the past two or three months, it's just been kind of snowballing, that the way to live longer and be happier in life and less stress and, and really um, kind of as, as a holistic person, but really it's like they've been talking about it as living longer is connection, to have not a lot of relationships, but deep, connected relationships. And that, that's where that word campfire keeps coming back. Um, new consumers, you guys are working at how do you really understand and bring these new consumers that happened during the pandemic along. Population changes. So I'm an Xer. I'm, let's say, the lower like, side, the, the later side of the Xers. But you know, now I'm thinking about retirement. So you're having these rich changes in population changes. And then really, this blurring of athletic fashion and outdoor. So that said, let's kind of take it down a notch. This is really sum summarizing what Matt's talking about. Just look over there. Fishing equipment, health and fitness equipment, and cycling. All of these huge booms um, during uh, the pandemic and now, you know, again, can't comp off of just these huge sales. So now when we start comparing year over year, 
we're seeing declines. Um, health and fitness really started earliest, like really like early March of the pandemic. And so we're seeing the deepest declines there as they're comping year over year. This is an important thing, and it's gonna be a little bit hard for you to see back there. But this is like looking at dollar volume change across all sports. So what you're seeing in those dark blue bars, those are sweatshirts. Like when, Mar when, when Matt Powell talks about sweatshirts, sweatpants, outerwear, those are absolute dollar volume changes. That's the change year over year. What else is on here is baseball bats as kids went back to school. We're looking at the, again, the mugs, the tumblers, the water bottles. Again, as people are traveling, going back to school, going back to work, kind of getting back to our, our life as gen in general. What's up there also? Pickleball. So those are absolute dollar value changes. Camp chairs. Now, I've done the same thing, and this is for all of NPD. So this is absolute dollar change. So that's that change there. And really what, what changed the most in the last year was auto batteries. So think about it. You can barely buy a new car, so that would make a lot of sense. We see outerwear is up there. But what we also see when we look at across all these categories, I mean, there's lipstick, things like that up there, are camp furniture. So that's right there at that bottom of the list, an absolute dollar change. This is across all consumer products that we track in the U.S. When we look at declining here, um, what you start to see are bicycles. So you see um, the mountain bikes that are declining. Again, they had huge growth. It's hard to comp off of that. So as Matt says, a lot of it's like giving, giving back. You see these big declines. So, and there's fitness equipment that's on there. So now we're dropping into outdoor specialty. So IBD, bike specialty, is down 6%. Outdoor specialty and what we, I call outdoor specialty e-com is really we split for outdoor specialty stores. We split the e-commerce portion of your business and the brick and mortar so that you can see those differences in what was sold in store versus online. Collectively, it's up 10%, which is amazing. And snow, which is really season to date. So the season starts end of August. So snow season to date overall is flat. So we go and we say, let's look at the, the outdoor business. We're tracking $28 billion in sales across footwear, apparel, equipment, accessories. Dollars are up five, units are flat, the average selling price is up 6%. We look at those channels. Again, you see that outdoor specialty is up 15%, and the e-commerce is up five. So e-commerce was up huge during COVID, down last year as people went back to stores, and you see that really strong outdoor specialty performance. When we look at this, and Matt showed us, um, you know, these similar percentages, 80% of the business is in apparel. So when we go back and we look here at this outdoor specialty, that up 15%, you can probably guess that outer, we've got apparel that's driving it, and we're going to look later, it's outerwear and sweatshirts here. Now, if you were here last year, in the past two years standing here, we'd be looking at double-digit increases in equipment, um, and so now we're looking at that decline of 2%. But, I mean, it was like the past two years, it's almost, it was, you were looking for an equipment category that was down. Everything was up in double digits. So we're seeing this shift, and we're seeing that shift where consumers have now invested in the equipment. Now they're buying apparel again. I look at snow. Um, snow overall is up 3%. When we look at the brick and mortar versus e-commerce and snow specialty, we see, again, it's early season. All the snow that's been happening um, since, we should have December numbers probably next week. So, um, you know, I expect it's probably going to be a pretty strong season with all the snow. Again, when I kind of look at things and say, how would I sum things up if you ask me what's happening in apparel? For outdoor specialty, it's outerwear and sweatshirts. In outdoor specialty, it's running. So you saw where Matt was showing these, like in the total US market, these declines in running. Um, running is what's driving the footwear in outdoor specialty. When we look at equipment, it's outdoor living, and we look at climbing. And then accessories are just, we're traveling again. Um, so when we look here, this is the, when you look at the whole business of outdoor, 
and look at the top 10 categories. It's outerwear tops, knit shirts, running footwear, sweatshirts, pants, shorts, headwear, socks, um, hiking shoes, and bottles. So really when we look at those dollar volumes and we're looking over the three years, what's happening in the so what here is last year when we were looking at 20 to 21, we were looking at double digit growth. A lot of these were looking at single digit growth. We still have some double digits, but a lot of it's single digit. We look at the ASPs that were really going crazy last year. Again, as Matt said, in the total market, they've moderated and they've moderated here. So really kind of when we look at outdoor equipment, really the story today is this outdoor living category. And when we look at this, oh, sorry. When we look at this, this is, again, the entire outdoor equipment category. These are the top 20 subclasses here, which bottles, um, kayaks, camp chairs, et cetera. Now you see, if you see that column, um, the growth from 20 to 21, you're seeing a lot of really strong double digit growth. You see virtually no declines, tents, down a little, essentially they were flat last year. Now you see a mixed bag, some things are growing, some things aren't. So before the pandemic, water bottles, um, you know, thermal insulated, like kind of was just so strong and then just literally ground to a halt during the pandemic, came back and that's continued to grow. So that was kind of one of the last to come back in the equipment categories here. Um, you'll also see that the average selling price is moderated where it was up last year, year over year, almost 8% across all equipment, it's up 1.6%. So we're starting to see this, we're starting to see things normalize. When we look here, this is just a visual of that. Um, that big blue bar is when we take all those equipment categories and we look at outdoor living, where that is what's driving the business. And then climbing, which is a very small category in relationship to outdoor living, that's up 13%, again, as consumers are going back to climbing, going back to gyms, et cetera. So now here, every image that you see is, a top, is the top seller in its category. So when we look here, I'm taking the top categories, but I'm taking the top categories that also have growth, and then I'm showing you the top sellers here. So um, really, a lot of it's what we expect. These are kind of the classics, but you see, you know, now these versions and hard-sided coolers and soft-sided coolers, the colorways that we're starting to see. So you're starting to see that, but not a lot's changed. Now we're looking at, I mean, again, it was hard the past two years to talk about equipment because everything was up. So um, you can see now we're kind of going down in the next category up is climbing shoes, then energy food, dehydrated food. So what we're seeing a lot is people, um, you know, invested in the big equipment categories now, what are the accessories or what do they need to be out? I need energy food if I'm, if I'm gonna go hiking or trail running, or you know, what are these different accessory categories that we're starting to see? And again, these are all the top sellers in their categories, but you can see like um, that Under Armour jug there. Again, the big volume water jug. Um, you see the, the camp heater, the Mr. Heater, the bonfire solo stove. I don't know how many that have that, but I have a, both a bonfire and a Yukon there. Um, you see dry gear that's up. You see the tent vestibule. So you buy a tent. Now you find out once you go camping a couple times that vestibule is probably a smart idea once you hit some weather. So I look at accessories. Accessories are basically backpacks and luggage, um, you know, uh, and then sunglasses are in there. So we, again, same story. During the pandemic, these categories were down. Last year, they came back in a big way. We saw double digit growth. This year, moderated in most cases to single digit. This is the one category where the ASP story really hasn't kind of normalized out. We're, we're seeing 4% last year and almost 6% this year in the ASPs. These are the top sellers. Now, again, think of these, this is a lot of, this is the specialty store story. These are the top sellers in each one of these categories. So a tote category that previously did we really pay attention to in the outdoor business, we see that Yeti really transformed that in, into a new story. Um, 
Just going to go back. Fanny packs has been strong, still strong. It's that kind of hands-free. I need to be mobile. I need to carry things. I need to be hands-free. We None of us ever thought they'd come back, and now it's a story. So outdoor apparel. Look at outdoor apparel. Outdoor apparel's up, and outdoor apparel's driving the business. Sweatshirts are driving that business as well. So we look here, this is one of the most interesting things I could show you today that's changed at retail. So we look at this, and I look here, and if I were going to tell you, like, the logos, like, normally, this is outdoor specialty brick and mortar. So think about that. Outdoor specialty, true specialty stores, like your stores, consumers walk in, what did they buy? Each of these is the top seller in that category. What's interesting is three or four years ago, it would be, Maybe all Patagonia and then maybe a North Face or an Obermeyer outerwear bottom or jacket. In here, there's two Patagonias, four Vioris, and an Obermeyer on here. So again, this is very different. That Viore brand, you know, three, four years ago, it was like friends that I would kind of call gym rats. They wanted a Viore. Oh, I want Viore shorts for Christmas. This is outdoor specialty stores. There's no sporting goods that we're bringing in here. And we see this Viore um, really dominating this. So I thought that was really, really interesting. We look at outdoor specialty for footwear. One of the kind of things that shocked me was hiking. Hiking is not on here. Every category that you see on here is a category that's up in sales. Um, as Matt said, um, running is down in the greater market. Running is driving. This is outdoor specialty brick and mortar. Running is driving that business on. Running is leading that business. Um, we see cold weather shoes, the sports slides, fashion shoes, slippers. And the reason why I also show you not only the best sellers, but it's kind of that image, like fashion shoes and outdoor. If I just showed you that, that wouldn't mean much. That's a hey dude shoe there that's the number one seller in its category. Um, also up there you see the insoles. Normally I'd be showing you green insoles. That insole is not the typical green insole we'd be looking at. Um, insole categories are up as people are, um, you know, again, getting back out, doing things. So we're seeing insole sales up. These categories, again, outdoor specialty, brick and mortar, these categories are not up but these are the top sellers in each of these categories. So the shoes you see there are all the top sellers. So looking at snow, we take snow down um, last season. So when we look at snow, we track snow from a season, August through March. So last season was the 20, oh no, 21-22 season versus 2021. So we look at that, you can see it was a very strong season last year. Um, snow specialty that really drives, what drives snow specialty is equipment, what drives snow chain is apparel. Snow chain, it could be anybody from REI to Dick Sporting Goods. Um, snow specialty are going to be your true snow specialty. Snow internet will be the e-commerce portion of the snow specialty. So you see really, really strong um, season last year. Coming out of the gate, much more moderated. Snow chain is up because snow chain is really driven by apparel which we know outerwear is driving that. So outerwear is driving the business. Sportswear, which again, sweatshirts, when we talk about sweatshirts in, um, in this business, it, in outdoor and snow, we're really talking about like the snap tees, et cetera. Um, sorry, I'm getting a little lost here. Okay, so these are top sellers. Again, this is just season to date. It's early season. So a lot of the equipment categories are down. When we had this, there wasn't a lot of snow. Um, so I'd expect them to be, be down. Um, we're going to see that bump up once we have December. And then January, we'll see another bump. Um, these are, though, each image here is the top seller within its respective category. Again, snow specialty brick and mortar. Now, I put this up here because backcountry has really been the story for the past few seasons. We've seen this growth. We saw a huge growth during the pandemic. We're seeing that moderate. And how the reason why we're seeing it moderate, as you know, the resorts were closed, so we saw this huge jump in the category. Resorts are open again, so we're starting to see backcountry moderate as resort access returned. 
Um, so kind of like just to give you some things, things that go through my head, things I think about, by the way, this was a barracuda caught on fly rod in Cuba. So I just had to you know, get a fishing picture in there. But really when we think about what's happened and we think about um, consumer behaviors, you're trying to say, you know, what's going to happen? Is the, my business going to be up or down? Um, you know, during COVID, once we, like we could get back to buying things, the reason why equipment sales went up is anything to get us out of the house. A bike, a kayak, a stand-up paddleboard, right? That's equipment sales went crazy. If it was a family that's never camped before, they went out and bought the tent and they, you know, started camping. Or the RV, the family camper. We started to see that growth. So what happened this year was we all went back to travel, right? We went, like, people went on Hawaiian vacation. I mean, if you've been in the airport, you know. Everyone went back to travel. So um, that really kind of pivoted and where we're seeing those declines. If you're on a Mexican vacation or you're going to Europe, you're probably not going to buy a kayak because you're not out kayaking. So that's really kind of pivoted our behavior now. Um, that will, again, n normalize. We're looking at inflation. We're looking at, you know, the economy being impacted. So we know that outdoor and snow and the outdoor business usually will, fishing will go back up as, as we get crunched and we're looking for other things to do. And remember, we've all invested in a lot of these products. Um, so your consumers have bought it. They've got it. They're going to need to buy the accessories, and they're going to go back to doing it. It's just right now, we're kind of all like our heads are turned. I mean, I like to go to concerts. I couldn't even go to any concerts this past year because you couldn't buy a ticket for a reasonable price. You guys probably know that, right? You couldn't go back. So we were kind of, as Americans, pivoted towards that and like less towards the outdoor and snow. This will pivot back, right? It doesn't... Our desire to do it doesn't stop, and we want to pursue our passions. I put this in here because this is a really good visual that's showing you that things are changing, right? We're, we're getting older. So, you know, for those of you that are millennials, you know, people started talking about millennials when you guys were, um, you know, in your teens to early 20s. Now you're, you know, married, having kids, established. So, we're starting to look at this. I'd, I'd like to believe I'm the, the youngest side of the Gen Xers, but again, we're thinking about what are we going to do? Are we going to be able to retire 10 years from now? So those are the things, and think about that. Think about how your customer is changing, what stage of life they're in, who your new customer is. So this is just um, be very aware of this, and Dirk really goes into this if you listen to his recorded webinar. Something very interesting is 55 plus drive the market, right? Kids are generally out of the house, there's more disposable income, more money to spend. So that's, those are the people spending the money. So a lot of times you're pivoted to younger, but look at who's spending that money and who's that driver. And again, think life stage, um, that ability to spend. And that ability, everybody's very active now. So there's no, well, we're gonna stop. What, when I was young, Old people like lived on South Beach and sat on a porch and did nothing, right? Then I moved to South Beach, right? So, and then we came and invaded, but now people that are old are just as active as, I mean, my mother's 85 and sometimes I'm like, you exhaust me. So, um, outdoor living, that's gonna continue to rule. It's gonna continue to rule with families. It's something that can be done in your backyard. It's something that can be done at the beach. It can be done on a mountain at a campsite. But that outdoor living concept is everywhere. This blurring of athletic fa fashion and outdoor, the Viore that I showed you, the running shoes in outdoor specialty and Viore there, I mean, that highlights that. Running footwear was driving that business. But what stopped me in my tracks is, do you guys know the brand No Bull? No Bull, um, that's that shoe that, sorry, I can't go. No Bull does training shoes. This popped into my Facebook feed, and this shoe. So think about this is fashion. I literally was like, I have to have that shoe with those flowers on it. So you take athletic, outdoor, and fashion, and literally I was like, and then I'm like, what am I doing? Just because I like the flowers, I'm going to buy that shoe. I don't need another shoe. So, but you are going to start to see that blurring and blurring and blurring. So 
what's next? What do we start to think about? And one of the things is innovation. So, you know, should we be innovating? And a lot of you, you know, might be even newer brands of this business. You, you're constantly thinking, what is that innovation? What innovation am I going to bring to the market? And is now a good time, right? We have inflation. We have economic, pro you know, there's all these things that we have. Should we really be innovating? Well, this is going to mean nothing to you all, but it stopped me like dead in my tracks. It was one of the most interesting things. So I'll tell you, so NPD, as we, you've seen, we track retail sales. We track retail sales down to the SKU. Retailers send us everything they track, and then we say, you know, this is a sweater, or this is a necklace, or, you know, this is a fa women's fashion boot, and we code that into the hierarchy. So think about it. Like, the products that have been in the marketplace, they're already coded. They come every month. They go to where they should go. But every month, there's new products. So you launch a new product. Your product goes to retail. It sells. Now it comes into our system, and it's a new product. So we have to look at it, and we have to say, is this a cooler? Is this a booty? Is this women's, men's? So we have to look at that product and code it and say, where does it go? Our business is modeled that 5% of our business are new products that are coming in every month, and we code them. Well, this chart, what this chart is showing you, that in July 2019, pre-pandemic, 5% was what we expected to code of new products. I mean, whether it's a TV or a snowboard, we code that when it comes in. Right now, in July of 2020, um, sorry, July of 2022, one and a half percent of what we are coding are new product. That tells you, again, there's a pandemic, let's not innovate, let's contract, let's just try and run our business. Um, oh, there's inflation, there's supply chain problems, let's not innovate. And that, is that true? Like this is the most interesting thing that shows us that innovation slowed down. So really, what would we recommend for anyone to do? Innovate now. You have less competition, right? It's one and a half percent of all products coming in are new innovative products. So just to leave you with some thoughts, I like to look at a couple of things that I call remarkable facts. And so we look at this and we look and things are maybe our categories down or the supply chain problems, there's inventory problems, inflation, whatever that may be. We look at 2019, if you were here, I was telling you the business was $22 billion. Today we're looking at a $28 billion. Again, this is the core outdoor business. This is outdoor specialty, this is sports specialty e-com, and this is the sporting goods and specialty retailers like REI. Um, so when we look at this collectively, this is, grew by $6 billion. It's quite remarkable. We look here, I mean, th just think about what $6 billion. It grew. And here's another data point. When we look at this, e-bikes. In 2019, e-bikes was a $240 million category. Today, it's an $877 million category. But then I said, you know, let's look at units. So in 2019, we we're looking at 125,000 units sold. Today, five, over 500,000 units are sold. What did the ASP change? So we knew e-bikes grew. We knew like even sporting goods retailers have picked it up and started selling e-bikes. The ASP then in 19 was um, $1,900 in 2019. Today it's $1,750. That's the ASP of the category. So now this is exciting. So this is the third year. So I'd like to say every year we give this award, but every year for three years, and this is the third year, we give um, a perf award, awards, we call it Outdoor Retail Performance Awards, and we award it for certain categories. I'm just going to give you, you don't need to read this, but I'll tell you the methodology. We go outdoor specialty brick and mortar, outdoor specialty e-commerce. We put those two together, so we're looking at really, um, you know, that true specialty product. We take the last 12 months, um, we then look at the brands that fall in the 80% of dollar volume of the category. So we're not getting just a new brand that sold one thing and then their sales were up a million percent. What we're looking at is we're looking, again, 80% of the dollar volume, the brands that fall in there, we sort it by the strongest growth, 
and that's the winner. So it's, it's a very uh, black and white, it's a great way to measure that growth overall. For snow, we do it season to date since we give the award now, so it's season to date, same methodology. So to give you the first winner, in equipment accessories, Stanley, um, you want to think of nostalgia. Um, when I talk about nostalgia, I, I think of Stanley because I've got the, um, you know, the, the thermos. I think we have two of the thermoses. Picture organic. And I know you guys are here. Like, guys, raise your, where are you? Are you here? Come on. Yeah, they, you guys clap. You got um, Dave and Marty over there, so clap for Picture Organic. I don't know if Stanley's in the room. I don't think they are, but let's clap for Picture Organic. Started 12 years ago. Um, Marty uh, brought it in to the U.S. Um, from France 10 years ago, and they are the fastest growing apparel brand in the U.S., so um, congrats. On running, again, this is outdoor specialty, the fastest growing footwear brand, so you also see it becomes harder for a top brand to win in, in, in growth because, again, it's going to be more moderated. So congratulations to On Running. Congratulations to Thule for being the fastest growing accessories brand. Rumpel for camping with their um, camping blanket. Liquid Logic in water sports. And K2 for snow sports. So... Um, it's a great award, so you guys give everybody like, um, and it's the most black and white award you can possibly give, right, um, in there. So kind of what's next, and I'm just gonna, gonna leave you with some of my thoughts here. Um, so on here, you know, that whole concept of nostalgia. I mean, I really think about it, and I, it's just a word that just keeps coming back and coming back, but it's a huge driver. It drives everything. It drives so much marketing. This whole concept, it's like there was one thing that kind of sums us up as Americans, it's that nostalgia. We're always looking for that time or that place. We always want to go back. We always want to remember that. So this really, you know, I started thinking about it in the context of the outdoor business, and I mean, think about it. You camped with your parents or your grandfather or as a, you know, as in Girl Scouts. Uh, you kind of think back and it just becomes very nostalgic. You know, we're looking for that time, that place. So, so think about what are you delivering there. The outdoor business delivers what they, you know, if you go anywhere, you start like going, does outdoor improve your mental health? I mean, that is the biggest topic today is mental health and wellness. And if you start looking, you look almost at any medical, medical site or hospital or anything like that, and they're going to say, go outside. That improves your mental health. So that's what we're delivering. We're delivering a lifestyle. We're delivering those relationships that connected. Like, think about somebody. Um, I'm involved in a program, and we had to, it was, it's an outdoor program, and we were kind of doing this meet and greet over Zoom, and we had to do breakout rooms. And one of our topics in the breakout rooms was, I love this question, was if you could go on a hike with anyone, who would you go on a hike with? And you just start thinking about it, and you start thinking about, wow, you know, would it be Barack Obama? Would it be, you know, who, who would it be? And you're starting to think, like, because walking along a trail with someone builds a relationship. Would it be, who would that be and why? And so it's that connection, that building of a relationship. The blurring of athletic fashion outdoor, that's going to continue to happen. I mean, it's just going to become completely blurred. Again, innovate now. It's the best time. You want to be leading. You want to have the most innovative product consumers. Supply chain issues are moderating. And then we come back to the thing that I keep coming back to, which is the campfire. I had to write this down because I said, why? Because sometimes I have these words and I don't really know why, and so then I have to think them through. So I asked someone who's in this room I, yesterday, I said, why do I keep coming up to campfire and why does it matter? And he said, why does campfire matter? I'll tell you why it matters. And this is an outdoor specialty retailer. He said, it is the one place that you forget yourself and purely experience others and connect with others. 
And so I said, that's why, because it's all about building those relationships, connecting. And think about it. I'm talking about outside of our industry. Talk, think about what, when you, if you turn on the Today Show, they're saying, you're going to live longer. You're going to be happier if you have at least one or two good connected relationships. So this campfire, like, and then I started thinking, you've got the stories that you tell. And um, another a colleague of mine um, last night was saying, well, he goes, I, I went on this experience where I went to this fly fishing lodge and it was amazing at the end of the day like to share all these stories. And you started thinking it's the campfire. It's, the camp it's in our DNA, right, from prehistoric man, right? You sat around, you shared your experiences, you told your stories. So this particular retailer said, um, he said, well, I'm actually building different campfire zones like out behind you know, our, our store because we want to create a space for people to experience community. So to really sit down and connect. And I love that kind of forgetting yourself. And during COVID, and I think that's why it kept coming up during COVID, nobody wanted to come over to your house, right? Nobody wanted to be in the house. So we would entertain on, we, had a, we have a little farm, and on our back porch we had, again, our solo stove, and we would entertain. I'd make individual trays of hors d'oeuvres and get everyone their drinks, and we'd sit out by the campfire literally probably five nights a week, and I thought about it, that everything's gone back to normal, that campfire's still out there, we still light it, but everybody now is, nobody sits around it, and we were forced to. The conversations that you have and the connections that you make, you really pay attention to each other. So I just kind of challenge you all to say, you know, what are your campfire stories and what are you bringing to your customers? Are you bringing them that ability to, are you helping them make the stories? Or are you helping them gather around the, the, the campfire? So with, um, with that, this is my favorite quote. It's always been my favorite quote. And it's my favorite quote because who would have thought I asked a question yesterday about campfire and that's the answer I got. Or we just, everything's connected and we just, the more we uncover it and the more we think about it. So I invite you guys, stop by our booth if you want to look at any information. If you have questions, you want to reach out to us. And then I'm going to kind of leave you here with these. Again, you, these QR codes or the actual physical copies at our booth, um, they will give you really the summary of the data we talked about today. And I just want to say thank you for coming this morning and have a great day. Thank you, guys.